so boring When I pull up on a red light, they don't want it Yeah, I came up from the morning, my baby know that Ultra gifted to my clothes, now she thinks she all that right. When I first hit her home, no, she never rolled back Then I saw her at the floor, so I got her phone my channel i would first like to thank all my new subscribers for joining in and a thank you to all my existing subscribers for returning and continuing to tune in today i'm going to show you everything that i have bought and made in october the video is slightly delayed to how i would have originally wanted to upload it but i have had a cold for the past couple of weeks and i'm finally on the other side and I knew if I did a video and was all head coldy in a couple of weeks or months time I would look back and be like I really wish I didn't do that then. So I thought that I would wait and this is the video now so continue watching if you want to see more. Every year I somehow managed to miss out on buying new winter shoes but this year I was determined for that to not happen. I normally end up going by the time that all the decent boots and stuff has been gone so I made a conscious effort to head out um, last weekend and actually get a few bits so that I have some new shoes for winter. So I first headed down to my local TK Maxx and TK Maxx is my favourite store. I have said it since the day that they gave me my first ever job many years ago um, and for those who don't know TK Maxx in the UK is TJ Maxx in the USA and they couldn't be TJ um, in the UK because we already have a TJ department store, TJ Hughes, which uh, most of their stores are up north, but obviously they're online as well. So the good people at TJ Maxx decided to select the next logical letter to uh, replace the J, and they here they are in the UK as TK Maxx. Um, I'm not sure, I've never shopped in a TK Maxx that hasn't been in the UK, so I'm not too sure how far the reach is, but I'm probably no doubt on the continent they are probably TJ Maxx still. So the two things that I bought, um, in my local TK Maxx was first of all these lovely suede over the knee black boots I love them I've needed some thigh high, knee high whatever high boots for ages and they're the pair that every winter I miss out on those are by Ted and Molly so it was an absolute bargain of a buy from the TK Maxx and I love them and I also got these Brogue shoe boot cross over hybrid style shoes um, and they're by Dune. Um, so again, another bargain getting them in the TK Maxx store. Um, so yeah, like, I mean, over the knee boots are so on trend for this autumn winter season. So I'm gonna be banging with everybody else. And I think the, the Brogue shoe boot hybrid cross it could be something that picks up. I mean, Brogue's are always a good shoe to have and I do like a shoe boot, so I figured why not merge them into, into one purchase rather than buying two separate things. Because um, it's not as if I don't have enough shoe boots in my life. <laughs> so then I also bought these shoes from m and I love m and shoes. Yes, I've still got the stickers on because I haven't worn them yet. <laughs> Trying to secretly hide that. Um, so yeah, so I bought those from m and they're £55, they are a wider fit, I should probably let you know this so you don't rush out and buy them in your droves. Um, so I had to go down two shoe sizes for them to actually fit. Um, I'm normally six and a half and they're a five and a half, and they're leather as well so they will stretch. So um, at the minute they are snug, they're not tight but they are quite snug, but obviously because it's leather it will give a bit so there was no point in me getting a my actual size six and a half that was too big anyway to then just have my feet floating around in boots and stuff so I've gone two sizes down two or five and a half um or technically one size down it depends on how you count it if you count half sizes as a size then it's two but if you don't then it's one so then also this month I bought some new patterns some I have already started using already I got two simplicity patterns and one Vogue pattern and the first pattern that I bought, well, it's not really the first pattern that I bought as if I went in separate cases, I bought them all at the same time. I got this one by Cynthia Rowley, it's a simplicity pattern. It's 8124 and it's like a bardo dress top and play suit or romper, depending on your preference of how you call it. 
Um, and I've got this Vogue pattern. It's like a super wide leg trouser, V8955. V8, and then I've got this Mimi G style bomber and jeans. And this is Simplicity as well, 8222. And I bought them because they were on sale really. They were an impulse buy and a necessary buy at the same time. This um, Simply Roly pattern, I bought it because uh, obviously bardos, tops, dresses are everywhere and I just wanted a really quick and easy pattern so that I can make a dress to wear to a party that I'm going to. Um, so I got this rather than faffing around with making one because again, time constraints, it was easier to get a shop bought pattern. And then this Mimi G style, I need it because I have been saying forever that I need to buy myself, I need to learn to make jeans. And these jeans are the kind of jeans I would normally buy from the store, the style of them. So it was a perfect pattern for me. And I know Judith D has also done, um, she's bought this pattern and she has made her jeans. If any of you follow her on Instagram, you would have seen it as well. And um, yeah, her jeans came out amazing and it, she did it super quick. So I'm really looking forward to getting on to doing this pattern and hopefully we'll make many, many more. But I also bought it because I have been working on making a bomber jacket since last year. Um, I have it here with me to show you. This is what I started making last year and the pattern is great and I think I'm there and I drafted the pattern myself but there's a part of me that is slightly concerned that it might not be quite right in terms of the fit. I've done the sleeves a bit different, they're like a raglan sleeve with a dart in the top um, and then there's tucks at the back and it's quite a nice piece. But I just need to finish it, so I figured that this pattern was on sale 50% off, they were running a simplicity 50% off, so I just bought it from there, and then I can just use it as a guide, and then hopefully I can then amend this pattern as an official bomber jacket pattern to make more custom bombers, because I do want to make many more, they are a good jacket to have. And then finally, the Vogue super wide leg trouser, as I'm calling it, I don't think that's actually what it's actually called, but it will do. I'm going to use this as part of a custom jumpsuit that I am making, which I will hopefully be making next month. I do need to make it next month because I'm meant to be wearing it next month. Well, I say next month, I mean November because it's November now, but I'm thinking I bought it in October, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. So I need to use this to make a custom jumpsuit, um, which will, I will do in November and hopefully show you guys afterwards how that turns out. So I just needed that to get um, a guide as well on how much actual fabric I would need and for speed to um, get the width because otherwise it's a bit of trial and error of how many pleats do you need to make it so wide and stuff whereas this is it's a pleated trouser it already tells me I need how much like four meters basically of material it's actually quite a lot it's more than I thought so they are the patterns and shoes, love my shoes, that I have bought this month. So moving on to what I have made this month and we will start with this bardo dress that I made from the Simply Roni pattern. As I said it's Simplicity 8124. I made it in like a poly crepe um, fabric, it's really lightweight fabric, it's actually a little bit see-through, not massively but a little bit. So when I made it, I wanted the skirt to be more full. Not so much full that it would flow out everywhere, but just having a bit more um, fabric, I guess, covering my body, being quite concerned that it would be quite a relatively short um, dress. That's quite a T-shape, so it's very easy to flow and blow up and everything. So if there's a bit more fabric there, it gives me more of a chance to grab it before the wind blows it up. So because um, I want it to be fuller, I cut the body of the dress on a size 16 in the pattern, um, and I'm not a size 16. But then because I cut proportionately smaller elastic, the elastic has twisted in it. I mean, I did my best. It's just crumpled basically under the weight of all the fabric and being so, like the fabric is really ruched up that the elastic really doesn't have that much space to stretch itself out. There are some areas where it is, but then there's a lot of areas, particularly here at the front, where it's all bunched together, which is, it's fine. I mean, it's a lesson learned. The next time I do it, if I do cut it wider again, 
then I will make sure that I use the anti-twist um, elastic that you can get, which is a lot stronger and I think probably more durable than the elastic that I got. It was relatively cheap. Um, I got it from just like a haberdashery store. Um, I don't think I got it in London. I think I got it one day when I was just outside London and I saw a haberdashery store and I was like, oh, I'll get some elastic. So if I did do it again, I would use anti-twist elastic, which I have used before in a um, jogging bottom waistband. And that turned out really well, so I would probably use that um, if I was to make it again. The pattern for the dress was really, really simple to use. Um, I would recommend that anyone who wants to make a, a barbo dress to get it, because it, it's so easy to use and it's really quick as well. And it can take, it can be made, the pattern can be made for pretty much any fabric. It's not a stretch pattern fabric, so it would be any um, woven fabrics, not jersey. You might even be able to get away with using jersey actually because it's a really durable pattern. It's a really durable pattern and really easy, easy to use. So I recommend other people to get it. The next um, item that I made this month was this kimono in this gorgeous floral print. Um, I'm building up a stack of floral printed things from the girl who, you know, was anti-floral print. Now I have loads. Again, this was a really simple pattern to use. I used a um, sewing with confidence pattern that my aunt gave me quite a while ago now. Um, I think she had it from when she used to sew. Uh, so I have no reference of, you know, whether or not you can still get it or anything like that. But uh, there's quite a lot of bits in here. There's like um, a little cami top and a slip dress and a wrap skirt. It's like a summer pattern thing. So I'm not even sure. It might even have used to come in a magazine. I mean, who even knows? Um, I'll probably have to do a bit more research to find out more about that and again the pattern was really simple to use the only amendment amendments that i made was i made the collar wider than what's in the pattern and i interfaced it as well because i've made this out of chiffon i would, didn't want the collar to get lost in like flopping around and not being a bit you know of a standout a proper collar so i interfaced it and so made it wider because i've done it double-sided and then I've also made it longer than what's in the pattern and I don't have the side slits that are in it um, but yeah it's a really beautiful it's a really beautiful piece I mean kimonos are so easy to wear the only thing that I really wish is that parts of the fabric were it like flopped the darker parts of it because I think it would just give it a bit more of a luxe finish um, so what I might do is I might uh, get some sequins or some beads and maybe hand sew them on sort of randomly and just to give it a bit more um, for something a bit more special because I just I just feel like the fabric is missing something as much as I do do love it I just feel like there's just something a bit of the texture maybe that's just missing a little bit so then the final thing that I made um, this month were these uh, cropped trousers and they were made in part with using this pattern from Prima and I really think that Prima patterns are really really great base pattern blocks so you will probably see them pop up quite a lot on my channel. I used elements of this into the trousers so the trouser I've actually made isn't one of the cells here but it has the waistband on it so I used the waistband of one and then the pockets of the other but I just didn't add on the button detail on the pockets. Then I've added a button into the waistband, which isn't on here. But I do really like Puma patterns. You can get them from the magazine, obviously, and they do take a bit of construction in terms of you have to trace out the size that you want. It's not just as simple as cutting out your size because the, the patterns are double-sided. So if you cut out one side, you would lose the complete pattern of the other. But that's fine, and I think that's what makes them such a good base because they have to be quite simple for people to for people to be able to trace them. If they were too complicated, it would be make them a lot harder to trace and probably put a lot of people off. So the patterns are quite simple in their um, design. So if you, it make, which makes them really easy to amend. It makes them really easy to amend, actually. You can just trace out whichever side that you want. If you want to add in a pleat or something, you can just cut it. Once you've chased it out, obviously expand it, add in your pleats and everything, add in your measurements, and then close it back up once you're sewing. So they will probably feature a lot on my channel, like I said, because I do use them quite a lot. That's it for my makes and buys in October. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it's inspired you to make something new or to maybe head out and get some winter shoes for yourselves. I would definitely recommend it, especially as the weather is getting colder now. There might be um, a few offers on and some boots and stuff that they haven't been able to shift through the summer. Um, but then also as well as obviously Black Friday on the way. 
I don't know, maybe hold out for that if you can. But um, don't hold out for too long because you don't want the website to crash. Um, speaking of websites crashing, did anybody try and get any Kenzo stuff? H&M and Kenzo did a collaboration. Did anyone try and get their stuff because I hear their website crashed as well? I feel like it crashes every year someone does a collaboration. I personally didn't try to get any of the Kenzo stuff because I... Um, I hate to say it, but I actually forgot it was happening until the day it was happening. But also as well, I feel like, for me, the pieces were um, just a little bit out there. The only thing I would have really wanted would have been a jumper. The most easy to wear of all the pieces that were there. As beautiful as they were, they were very, very beautiful. They are just not really up my street. But, I mean, hey, you know, everyone's a critic these days. So, <laughs> and, you know, take my words with a pinch of salt. But if anybody did actually go to Kenzo, go to Kenzo, go to H&M, or go on their website to get into Kenzo. Let me know, let me know what you think about it. Put your comments in the boxes below, and it'd be great to have a conversation about it to find out what you actually think. Um, I have a few exciting things coming up in November that I'm really looking forward to sharing with you guys, but I will do that in a separate video because it will take um, this video up to like 20 minutes and by that time we'll be a bit bored and like, oh my gosh, she just keeps going on and on. So yeah, I will leave this video here. Um, and thank you guys for watching, thank you everyone, like I said at the beginning, to all the new subscribers and for everyone who keeps returning and tuning in, um, it's amazing, thank you guys, it makes me feel really great inside to think that people actually want to sit and listen to me for a couple of minutes a day, um, it's just fantastic. You can follow me on social media, I'm on Instagram the most, I have a Twitter account but it's basically the Twitter version of my Instagram feed, uh, because I, I don't know. I'm good with pictures, I'm not so much good with 140 characters, even though they say that it's more now. So maybe I'll get involved, who knows. Thank you again guys for watching and as always, like, share and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye! What sewing machine do you have? I have a Singer Ideal.